Have we lost hope for home ownership around the U.S.? I hate to say it, but I have another negative article here talking about the challenges getting into home ownership because of affordability. And we're going to talk about that today. And of course, we're also going to talk about what's going on in Phoenix. Big news last week with CPI. So let's get into it. Nearly 40% of renters think they'll never own a home. And that's up 27% from last year. Nearly two in five U.S. renters don't believe they'll ever own a home. That's a really sad thing to hear. Home ownership is uh, a great way to build wealth and, um, you know, part of that American dream, so to speak. And uh, it's sad to hear that so many people are having challenges breaking into that and have you know, really given up hope. They cite lack of affordability being the biggest reason why they're not uh, likely to become home homeowners. So that's no surprise. Uh, nearly 44% don't believe they'll buy a home in the future said it's because uh, available homes are too expensive. Ability to save for a down payment is too challenging. Ability to afford mortgage payments and high mortgage rates. Um, and roughly one in eight simply aren't interested in owning, owning a home. So um, unfortunately, that is the state of affairs as it comes to home ownership. And so like I said last week, we got some big news. Uh, CPI came out and wasn't pretty. Uh, stubbornly high U.S. inflation grew stronger than expected in March. And the reason we follow this, of course, is because it affects what happens with mortgage rates. And so last week we saw a 3.5% increase for the 12 months ending in March. That's up considerably from February's 3.2%. Really, you know, in a nutshell, We've been seeing some progress with inflation. There's been a lot of positive news around inflation and, and us kind of getting to the point where we feel like we're on top of it. And the Fed has been saying that they'll probably do some rate cuts this year. And this totally uh, took us in another direction. So what this means, means for the Fed, you can kiss a June interest rate cut goodbye. Pretty cut and dry here. Absolutely no urgency to cut U.S. interest rates. Um, but this also affected mortgage rates. And last week, we saw mortgage rates uh, go up quite a bit. Wednesday was one of the worst days in decades in terms of a single day upward movement in mortgage rates. So if you are out there as a home buyer and you haven't heard from your lender, make sure you check in with them because what you're qualified for or what your payment could be could have changed a little bit, so you wanna make sure you check in with them. Thursday uh, last week added a bit more insult to injury. I think Friday, it sounds like things came down slightly, but there was already so much damage done earlier in the week that uh, where things ended on Friday were still higher than where we started the week. So that's the latest in mortgage news. I hate to say that for anyone hoping for lower rates and this goes for sellers too, because if you have a home on, on the market right now, buyers are getting less and less interested in uh, going out to look for homes when their mortgage payment goes higher and higher. It also decreases the amount that they can spend or what price range they're looking in. So <clears throat> this is not good for sellers either. Um, but of course, for buyers, this really changes your affordability as these things change. So. We'll see what happens with mortgage rates. Now, what's going on in Phoenix? Let's talk about that. But first, if any of this is helpful, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. So last week, I had a few comments about people not loving the CMI or finding value in that. And I know many of you do, but I figured I would share some additional information based on those comments. And one of those things was the contract ratio. So the contract ratio compares the number of homes on the market that are available for sale as compared to how many are already under contract and comparing those two numbers gives us a, a ratio and the Cromford report created a heat map based on that uh, based on zip codes so let's take a look at what's going on you can see most of the valley through here is more in that like balanced warm range that's what the green color is and then of course the yellow is getting warmer and then the red is going to be hotter areas and so some of these warmer areas you can see this here in Phoenix uh, kind of going towards the West Valley. We've also got some areas of Glendale, uh, Avondale over here, 
and Litchfield Park and Buckeye. And then as we go to look at uh, the East Valley here, Queen Creek is kind of in that warmer range as well. Some of the hotter areas, however, we've got Gilbert and Chandler. We've got Levine in that hot range, South Phoenix areas. We also have North Scottsdale, 85254, North Phoenix, uh, a few different zip codes there. So this gives you a good picture of what's going on. If you do have a particular zip code that you're interested in, drop it in the comments below and I can get you that information. So some of the other feedback was, let's look at what's going on with active listings. And so taking a look here, we are not rising too aggressively, but um, staying, staying high. And you can see in previous years, the trend is always to our, our active listing starts to diminish as we get further into the year because um, we have more buyer activity usually and that's not happening. So we're kind of going in a different direction here. Um, at about 17,000 listings, nothing to be concerned about, but this number is, is not going down. It's been kind of staying steady. And when we look at new listings coming to the market, you can see we have more than we did last year, year to date. So that's what this uh, chart is comparing here. This was last year, year to date for new listings. Um, here's where we are today in 2022. Uh, we were a little bit higher than where we're at today. So you can kind of see the, the trends here. Last year was just very low for new listings. Um, and new listings meaning we're seeing new listings come to market. So kind of that, that rate of new listings hitting the market versus active listings, that's just everything that is currently on the market. So with interest rates being high, of course, buyers are looking for some help in buying down their interest rate and new builds do a lot of that, but sellers can also help out buyers by offering a concession to help them buy down their interest rate, make their payment a little bit more affordable. And we are seeing quite a few seller concessions out there right now. This is broken down by city um, and this is the number of closings in the last 30 days that had a seller concession. Um, so Gila Bend and Palo Verde, a little bit skewed there because they probably had fewer sales. Yeah, just one sale there. But you can look at, um, you know, El Mirage, Tolleson, Arizona City, Coolidge, Waddell, Avondale, all of those in like the 80, 70 percent range. And then as we get uh, further down, this is decreasing, but surprising maybe to see how many sales have had seller concessions, 50 percent seller concessions in Goodyear, Morristown, Peoria, Levine, Glendale, um, going all the way down to the bottom. Rio Verde had the fewest number of concessions, Paradise Valley, Sun Lakes, Scottsdale, Cave Creek, all of that not surprising. Some of those being more expensive areas where buyers aren't usually going to need those kinds of concessions. So seller concessions are a thing. If you do have your house listed for sale, keep that in mind because a buyer very well could ask you for seller concessions. And if you're a buyer out there, uh, make sure you're trying to see if you can get it negotiated in, if it can help you out. Um, it's definitely something to look at. So let's take a look at the CMI. We're at 111.6 just going down ever slow, slightly every single week. Demand is at 79.6, so we're about 20% below normal. Supply is about 29% below normal. Um, these two are you know, getting closer together, which is getting us closer to balance. We're basically in balance at this point. 110 is considered balance. So throughout the valley, you know, that's kind of what you can expect. But as we just saw with that graph of concessions, every city is a little bit different. So looking at every city on this graph, we've got some that are stronger than others. The average change is actually 0.3% in a positive direction compared to 0% last year. So we gained a tiny bit of ground over the last, uh, the change over the last month. Chandler is still leading the pack with a CMI of 215. Um, and you know, if you go back to that contract ratio, you saw Chandler was pretty hot. They have a higher contract ratio in a few areas, depending on the zip codes. The Cromford report can't break uh, down the CMI by zip code because there's not enough data in zip codes for the CMI specifically. So we won't be able to see that by zip code, but you can see the city overall is leading the pack, which aligns with what we're seeing on the contract ratio uh, map as well. 
Gilbert is up there, Glendale, Tempe, Mesa. Um, and then we've had some cities that had a pretty big change month over month. Um, Queen Creek, Fountain Hills, um, and Tempe actually had a change in the direction favorable for sellers over the last month. They gained 13%. Um, so the way to look at all of this, anything between Paradise Valley um, and Cave Creek, those are all balanced markets. Goodyear to Buckeye is a buyer's market. And then everything from Peoria up to Chandler is technically a seller's market. So if you're a buyer out there, make sure you check in with your lender if you haven't already based on the changes that you may have seen last week. And sellers, if you are still considering selling regardless of these interest rates climbing and the potential to damper buyer demand, check out the description below. I have a link for an instant home value and make sure to watch this video here about the best time to sell your house.